Hi, everybody. Welcome to uh, Real PR in Real Time. My name is Michelle Tennant Nicholson. I'm the Chief Creative Officer at Wasabi Publicity and co founder of pitchrate.com, a media networking site. I am so excited to be doing a six part series where we're actually pulling back the curtain on what I've been doing for PR for 31 years. I can't believe I've been doing PR that long, but yes, I have seen PR transition from typewriters to Twitter. So what we've been doing in this series um, is looking at um, this book, the 21 day PR workbook, but also working with uh, an association and a particular author from that association and actually developing his campaign. And his name is Clayton Moore, and I would like to introduce him. I see him in the audience. Um, so uh, Hannah, my assistant, will unmute Clayton. And Clayton, how are you? How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing fine. How's everybody doing? Happy New Year, everybody. Thank you. I'm doing great. Yeah, it's really uh, wonderful to see you. And I've been thinking about you a lot in the past few weeks. And we definitely have uh, a press kit glimpse it's like it's a draft. It's not completely uh, final because you haven't seen it yet. But what we've been working with on are your media materials since the last time we met, right? So yes. I'm so excited to kind of share that with you. But for everybody on the call, I just want to tell you what we're going to do today. Okay. So today is really about pitching. So you may have questions about the previous two sessions. And at the end of this session, you'll be able to ask questions about that. And then uh, what we're gonna actually be talking about are love languages. So if you, there's a, uh, and then Hannah, you can do the uh, direct, cause I think I put the, I put the link into the chat before everybody actually joined. So if you don't see that, Hannah is, uh, my co-host is going to actually put that blog link there so that you can read it. What it has in it is a minute by minute outline of what we did last time to kind of get you uh, as an observer to really see what did we actually do? Because it feels like chit chat. It feels like, what did we actually do? But it's actually skillfully extracting from Clayton his passions on what we want to talk about with the press. So what we're actually talking about is not your book. It's not your service. It's not your company. Oh, I know. It's such a it's such a stab in the heart because nobody cares about you. But it's true. The media, the press, they care about their own agenda and themselves. I don't have to tell you in this news cycle that that's more prevalent than ever, but it's true. They're a company. They sell ad they sell uh, air and ink time, right? So the more viewers and readers and listeners they get, the more money they make. So what they're actually interested in is something that moves forward their business, just like any business person, right? How many business calls have I been on uh, where somebody says, just cut to the chase. I don't have time to waste. Time is money. And as an entrepreneur, I understand that. And then I give them exactly what they need and cut right to the chase. But what we're doing is actually looking to see what you can offer the media as a go-to media expert. So while we're talking about Clayton's specific book and all of you and your specific books, products, services, organizations, whatever you have to promote through earned media, what we're really talking about today is what the press wants. It's all about pitching them what they want. And for many, many clients, as long as I've been doing this, it is a rude awakening that the press just really doesn't care about you. So can we just do a quick, uh, we're going to do a breakout session, and I want you just to say whatever's present for you. And now, if you've never known that and you didn't know that, and that's now upsetting for you, I wanted you to get it out of the way, okay? So you can, uh, if you're like, I don't really have anything to say about that, I already knew that, then just introduce yourselves and get related to somebody else on the call. We're gonna take five minutes just to get related to another human being. And so while we're actually coming back, 
I'd actually like to share with you my screen so you can see what we've actually done with Clayton's press kit. Now remember it's draft, draft. so it's not final. So you can see here from the last session, what we've done is we've placed, our writers have put together a homepage, three bios. Clayton has given us two images. We've created, uh, these are questions that the press might ask Clayton during an interview. All uh, these are just suggested. It's not something that they will always use, but they might use them, just helps them out. Then we've also developed news and story ideas. These become the essence of your pitches. So we're gonna be talking about pitches today. And this is what um, we're gonna be saying to a media person, here's how you can actually cover Clayton and his experience and his expertise in the press, in your news cycle. And then you wanna make sure that you have contact information, that someone can be uh, responsive in a short time frame. Now notice on the homepage that we also have, these one pagers here are uh, optional, but we what's not optional is actually letting people know where to get general consumer information. So this would, uh, it's, it's listed here at the bottom and then it's also listed here inside these short, you know, this is a, a byline bio is for print and then the broadcast bio is really for if he's doing a podcast or radio or something like that. But, and then you also notice that we're putting the hashtag because that's something that we want to find him, right? We want people to, um, it's sort of like, gingerbread trail back to Clayton Moore. Okay. Now, some of you were asking how to actually get his book and read his book. If you're interested in his actual story, you can read the paragraph here. That's sort of in summary. You can get on the notification book release here, goodcopblackcop.com. Now, what's surprising is uh, the lack of story that we covered last time. I think that's surprising for some people. I, I got some emails about that and um, it's intentional. So believe it or not, you can actually get media coverage without a book. And the book is probably about 10% interesting. It's just another credentialing point for the press. So think of your book as sort of like a credentialing piece like your degree. Okay, so <clears throat> one of the things that I wanted to uh, also just before we dive into today's content is also just talk about where we are inside the series. So at this point, you know, we're, we're actually moving along the content that we wrote for 21 days. We're slowing it down because some people said, oh, it's just it's 21 days. Okay, great. But this is all so new to me. I have no idea what you're talking about. It's all jargon. So we're slowing it down for people on purpose. Where you should be right now is uh, just a draft of your online press kit and a draft of a pitch, okay? So if you're already finished with your press kit and you have it already put on technology like ours, online press kit 247, or you're putting it in another format, maybe on your website, maybe somewhere else, um, great, you're ahead of the game, okay? Where we're headed is we're talking about pitches and then who are we gonna actually pitch? And then the last uh, part of the series, the sessions five and six are gonna really be about how to leverage and excel at the actual interviews. And hopefully, this is the risky part, hopefully I will have uh, placements and interviews for Clayton so that we can actually play, okay? If I don't, then, uh, then you'll have to fire me, right Clayton? <laughs> <laughs> that's like, that's always when a publicist, we can never guarantee placements. If you have a publicist who's guaranteeing you placements, you should probably fire that publicist. Uh, that means that they're doing something else other than earned media. Remember, we had distinguished paid, owned, and earned. Paid is advertising. And then owned media is your website, your social media, your book, your intellectual property, your business card, your brochure, anything that you own. And then the, and those are both 100% in your control that you control the message and you're purchasing or you own the distribution of that message. 
Where you don't have control is in earned media. That is a dance with other people. And we're trying to get inside their paid or owned assets. Okay, so it's basically being the noisy kid in the classroom um, and just saying, ooh, 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 I have, you know, or the, I, I just had the image of welcome back Cotter. I know that dates me, but remember, was it Horshack? Horshack, Horshack. <laughs> ooh, 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 Mr. Cotter, Mr. Cotter, Mr. Cotter. And for those of you who do not know what I'm talking about, I don't want to hear anything about age, okay? That means that you're young and too young to remember that sitcom. Was that the 70s or the 80s? I think it was the 70s, right? Oh my gosh, time. Now, I also want to acknowledge the people from the last session. We had a lot of great uh, articles and because I gave everybody the uh, challenge of going to news.google.com, which you can do again today. I think I recommend that you start to get into a habit of actually doing that on a daily basis. Why is that? Macro conversations. So what you're trying to do, because you're trying to get somebody else to put you in a news cycle, you want to be familiar with what they're covering and what they're talking about. Okay. So uh, that's, so while we're like, let's say, cause you're adults and I have a master's degree in human development. And one thing I know about adults is when you're bored or challenged or thwarted in the conversation, like you don't understand what I'm talking about, or maybe you're just overwhelmed. What you're going to do is start to think about your laundry list. Or you're going to start to question why you're even participating. That is just being human, my friend. Okay. And I want you to pull yourself this conversation to stay present and pay attention because what I'm actually teaching you is how to be with the press. And the first way to do that is to find out what's inside their agenda. So if you start to go to sleep, think about your, uh, your, laundry list, Friday's laundry day for me. So I often think about um, what I'm having for dinner or did I actually put the laundry in the dryer? Okay. So if that happens to you, don't do it. And instead go to news.google.com. Hannah, please put that in the chat. And what you did last time is you were helpful and gave me maybe about a dozen stories to tie in Clayton's good cop, black cop, guilty until proven innocent book into the macro conversation that's going on called Black Lives Matter. This session, I want you to do it for you. Okay. So I want you to think about, so this starts to get into um, who, which I'm jumping a little bit ahead. But when I start to go back, then I'm just giving you something uh, for your adult brain, okay, so that you can stay present in the conversation for yourself. When you go to the news conversations, you can look at national or world, if that's where you're targeting. Many of you will not be targeting that large. You might just be doing your city, or you might be doing a particular industry, right, like health or schools or legal. So then adjust your parameter, your search parameters based on who you want to listen to your message, right? With Clayton, his is national. We want, uh, well, and a little international Clayton, you know, we might actually get some play because of, you know, Black Lives Matter has, you know, went, Black Lives Matter went international in 2020, right? When we saw all the countries uh, join the protesting, right? So that's why all of a sudden your campaign shifted from maybe what somebody might think of like, oh, it's just in Ohio. Well, you, you know, you just all of a sudden went national because of the movement that you're speaking inside. But also because people are changing, like all of a sudden Clayton was over here and then all over here. Like, I don't know if you all are experiencing that with your Zoom too, but it's hilarious. Like, so if you see my eyes shifting, it's because I'm, I'm following Clayton, right? And I also just want to see everybody else's faces too, because if you start picking your nose, then I know that you're bored, okay? So don't, don't pick your nose on Zoom, okay? Um, that's what I tell my husband all the time, right? So Clayton, the other thing that happened for you is that your target market really is also police departments, but more importantly, 
the ones that are training police departments, right? So that's called a trade industry target. So you both have general consumer Black Lives Matter, which is in the pop culture, political culture. And then you also have one that's specific. So then, so uh, I want you to also have an opportunity to share. I read your chats from last time. I find them incredibly helpful. And I am blown away by the level of um, professional, uh, the, the capacity of the professionals that are in this, that are participating with us. So you actually have a lot to share with each other. Um, so I, you know, if you're really uh, connecting with somebody on the call and you want to share with them, I want this to be active for you. And then that's where you use the chat room. Let's say you don't have your buddy uh, like you had uh, created from session one, but you still want to share. You can put it in the chat. You can either share for Clayton's uh, Black Lives Matter angles, or you can share about your what you're discovering for yourself. Because when I read the chat later, it gives me a sense of what you're learning. And because you're an adult learner, if you don't communicate what you're learning, you'll probably forget it. Okay. We got to kind of bring ourselves to be that ongoing learner later in life. You know, we're all not 10 years old anymore where it's just coming naturally to us. Okay. Because one thing that adults know is they know it all and they very rarely begin a be bring a beginner's mind to a situation, me included. So I always have to be mindful of maybe I don't know what's best and maybe I need to have be contributed to by another person. Okay. So with that said, you got a little task and the chat room will light up and I'll read it later. I'm not gonna read it now. Hannah's gonna be watching if I have to stop and address a question or something like that, but I'll be sure to just have you raise your hand and then answer questions at the end. What we're gonna talk about now, I'm gonna lecture a little bit. That's why I gave you, when I was a fifth grade teacher many years ago, um, I had a, a very creative troubled child in the room and he, uh, he couldn't pay attention. He could just uh, do the coloring, right? He'd color, 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 and then make, he had a different mind because he was actually going through probably a lot of turmoil at home. And what happens in your brain is that the creative part of your brain lights up when you're experiencing PTSD and the self-care part of your brain shuts down. And so for him, what he needed was something to do with his hands, like that kinetic learner, right? Like we talked about in session one, so uh, you should just be free to do whatever, whatever you need to engage in this conversation. Buddies, uh, looking at news.google.com, how can you move forward your pitch? And here's the lecture part. So one of the things that uh, I wanna also put in the chat, Hannah, if you, if you need more examples than just Clayton's, and I'll go next, the next session is really in depth with Clayton's press kit. That's the real unveil. I was just giving you a glimpse of it today, okay? Because we promised you we would. Now, uh, but he's got to go over the messaging and make sure that it feels good to him, okay? And then Clayton, you'll be getting that from our writers about all of that. What, you know, do you like it or not? But searchpresskits.com is another place. And that's what Hannah will give you that link in the chat. That's another place. Uh, she's giving you the direct link. I gave you the vanity link. Uh, the searchpresskits.com gives you just endless examples. And on the home page, there's also um, the some of our current clients. So you, if you go deep into, then there's you know the, the self, the do-it-yourselfers. I recommend that you look at the home page and see the pictures on the front, then you know that I'm actually pitching them and I've approved that press kit. You can also look at storytellertothemedia.com. That's a shortcut link to my blog. And you should be looking at the blog uh, as you move through this uh, participation because I give you kind of like, here's what to do next, okay? So there's also examples that I put in last time. And then this love language conversation that we're having right now is really dissected for you in yesterday's blog that we posted. So here's what we're gonna talk about today. Oh, and I, I have a reminder uh, also to make sure that you know about uh, next Friday, 
so that Hannah, will you make sure that if there's a separate type of registration or anything else they need to know about registering for the, un, the unveiling of Clayton's call that people have that it should be on your program page, everybody. Okay. And some people have been asking, can I join midway? Yes, you can. You can get caught up in the blogs and then join midway. It doesn't matter. So today, what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about what's your love language and what's and more importantly, what's the love language of the press. And then we're going to move then into what is going to make the difference for the press? Who, who are you going to pitch? When? So the timing is everything. And then also how? So do you use email? Do you use phone? Do you use snail mail? Do you do social media? And then the other piece is, uh, we'll open up then to questions. And I want to know what's working, what's not, and how you need to be supported. And if you're feeling left out that I just talked about buddies and you're coming in late or you don't have a buddy, your automatic buddy is Hannah. Hannah, put your email address also in the chat so people can get with you. And in the bottom right-hand corner of your chat, there's an ellipses button that you can click on and save all that information at, at any time in the call to your computer. Okay. Also, if you get have trouble with that, we'll deal with that at the end of the call. So here's my lecture. When we talk about love languages, you know, my husband and I, my love language is gifts. When he, when we started dating, he, there was one Easter that he surprised me with um, a little box. I didn't get him an Easter gift. Like, even though I love to get gifts, I'm a terrible gift giver. Is that ironic? So he's a great gift giver. It was one reason why I fell in love with him, but he wouldn't just give me any gifts. It had to be practical. So instead of giving me chocolates for Easter, he gave me two. It was, oh, I should have had that cup for you all today. So you could have seen it because I actually still have the cup. Um, it was a coffee cup and the bottom of it looked like an Easter egg. Okay. And so he had it upside down and then he had like little self-care things like, a you know, a you know, what women like to do with, I've got like little masks and and different things to use in my bath. So I just, those types of things like really made an impression on me when we were dating. The press is no different, right? Now, my husband, by the way, could care less about gifts, what his, what his love language is. And if you're like, I've never heard of love language. I can't, that was another book, by the way, that was somebody's book, right? So you can just look that up online and then take the quiz. Um, it's a really nice body of work, the love languages, and people really enjoy that. So um, notice how I remembered the topic and not the author's name. That's very typical for humans, okay? So you want to have a compelling, like I suspect that Clayton, they'll remember good cop, black cop, but they might not remember your name. And so that's why when you're naming something, you really want it to be strong so that the human brain can really just recall it after they've embedded it in their own memory. So the thing about my husband is he likes quality time, okay? So he doesn't really care about gifts or anything. Uh, and once I found that out about his love language, uh, it annoys me, but I know that when he comes home from work, it's important for me to go to the kitchen and sit down and just look at him and say, tell me about your day. That just lights him up, right? For me internally, it's like gross, right? Like it's a total time suck and I'd rather like get to my checklist. I'd rather go do the laundry and like, cause what makes me feel good is, you know, checking off that checklist, <clears throat> right? Um, so what about the press? So the press's love language is making a difference. So what they want to know is how you're going to further the uh, commitment they have to educate, entertain, inspire. You've got to do, make a difference for their audience. They don't really care about what you're selling or promoting. What they want to know is how you're going to uh, improve the lives of the people that they're serving. So how do you make a difference? Okay, so we're going to get into that with Clayton and give you kind of a little example of that. So Clayton, uh, let's unmute Clayton, unmute him. Are you ready? Okay. Do you remember what you said in the last session about um, what you would like to teach people? 
<clears throat> oh God, we said so many things. Uh, and um, as far as the training, uh, just yes, yeah. So let's just go ahead. And so I'm just going to show you the news and story ideas because it came straight from that part of the call. Okay. Okay. It's also in the back of your book, mm -hmm. right? So the back of your book has specific, you have your personal story. And in the back of your book is how police departments can actually train their police officers to make a difference too. Mm -hmm. So you'll see here that that the majority of what we're talking about makes up this page. Mm -hmm. Really, you know, unpacking inner bias. You know, we talked last time about defund the police, pay for tools, training instead of mistakes. He talked about refunding the police. Now, we are going to play with defund the police, but the the idea somebody was saying last time in the chat room, refund the police. Once you actually start to look at these individual angles, you want to search them online because some of what we talked about as Kristen so eloquently brought up at the end of last call, um, it's going to have its own baggage, those conversations. The refund the police is already an anti-defund the police campaign. Now, you can kind of play with that, but we want to think that through before we go whole hog on that particular strategy, okay? And we'll get into that when you see drafts of everything. But when you're looking at, well, what do I actually... What is Clayton going to teach, educate, entertain, inspire others about? Well, he's not going to entertain them per se, although he's a very um, spiritually uh, engaging gentleman. And so for that purpose, we're wanting to hear from him, right? So radio shows will want to talk with him. He's got a shocking story. So that, that's one reason that they would want him to entertain in a uh, shocking way, <laughs> almost like a horror flick does, right? So just because you might not have a positive story, they still want you on for entertainment value because people, they just don't want people to click to something else. Entertain uh, educating, now let's take a look and see. So um, cultural awareness training, you know, what's actually um, healthy community police relationships, one of the things we also talked about with Clayton was his experience and um, that he's got a communications degree, okay? Also a paralegal certificate. So these are things that you can highlight inside your pitches that they're not, you know, the name of Clayton's book pretty much tells you the story. So if they're booking him for entertainment value, that's when they're going to talk about the story. But the majority of his press engagements are going to be about how he can educate people to communicate and get along better. Does that make sense? Okay. So uh, let's go ahead and, um, well, there's a few more things I want to do in the lecture before we break into a session, then we're going to do questions. The other thing that I want you to think about, um, so you can also share that in the chat right now. So if you're kind of like, gosh, I don't know what difference that I make. I don't, what difference, you know, I don't know what difference I make. That's okay. We're going to help you out. We've got, we've got plenty of beautiful minds on this call to help you out when we get into breakout sessions. So just write that down that you need that help. Okay. Hannah's also somebody to support you with that. Okay. Any type of support you need, whether it's technology, media list or anything like that but hannah can also help you with like oh my gosh i'm just so stuck who do you want to serve so clayton when you think about the press you want to cover you do you have an idea of what that is i mean i want to be all kind of press typically you know um what do you dream about big um well let's be specific it's like that old saying right when people talk when they do that abundance training mm -hmm. they go you got to be specific you got to ask for twenty thousand dollars not just a lot of money you right be specific yeah. right okay um well i dream about i dream about being on talk shows you know i dream about you know having um a movie made about my story you know i dream about traveling across the country and maybe 
you know, in other countries, uh, sharing my experience and and just you know, just my um, my solutions and and just you know having an impact and make make it a difference. Just you awesome. know. Okay, I'm going to keep coaching you on being specific. Okay, so you the okay. first thing you said so great on the movie. That's mm -hmm. a different play. That's like getting an agent and actually talking with people who actually produce movies. Mm -hmm. It's a little distinct from although people can read about you in the they might a producer may or an agent may hear about you. Mm -hmm. What we're talking about, let's go. Let's let's unpack talk shows. Mm -hmm. Let's start with those talk shows that you watch. The shows that Clayton watches probably different than what Hannah watches, especially in America. Now, if you go to a place like um, Germany, I was talking with Elizabeth a little bit about Germany. Um, it's a little more narrow when we do campaigns in other countries. They're a little more collected. They're a little more uh, bundled. But let's just talk about the talk shows. I want to hear the talk shows that you, that make a difference in your life that we could pitch. What do you watch? Well, I don't pretty much get a chance to watch talk shows at this point because I work days. <laughs> yeah, at my at my hobby at, at uh, the uh, gym I work at. But um, you have time. I mean, I went from an Oprah hater to an Oprah lover. <laughs> ah, interesting. Okay. Yeah. Oprah. Uh, okay. So Oprah doesn't have her talk show anymore, so it looks right. more like her assets, right? Like Oprah.com. Right. Okay. Right. Wow. Uh, I'm starting to uh, get into podcasts. Oh, good. Tell us the podcast that you like. And um, just like, um, i trying to think of the one specific I heard the other day, but motivational and anything positive and coaching and just uplifting. Okay. You know? All right. So there's a few um, there's a few podcasts that I can think of that I have relationships with, but I want you to do a little bit of homework, Clayton, and start making a list of the podcasts that podcasts that you've actually downloaded and listened to. Okay. And I want everybody to do that, right? So what first of all, what media are you actually consumed by, right? The what I always say: stories that you consume consume you. Be mindful of what you're watching, reading, listening to that's where you start with who to actually pitch okay and then what we're going to do is go to the website and then actually look to see they usually have information on how to pitch them and if there's not then you go to their social media and then contact them through their social media it's really that easy okay now you'll see that on oprah.com um or shows like tamron hall which are uh kind of the current version of things like oprah so um Drew Barrymore also has a show, but I like Tamron Hall for you. Okay. And I know a producer over there, Clayton. So fingers okay. crossed everybody, but um, that's going to be something that like, they're going to have a piece on their website that tells them how to tell, like have a show idea, have a story idea. You'll see that on most media places. Okay. Now, when to pitch. So what's the difference between evergreen seasonal and breaking news? Clayton, do you know, or do you need me to tell you? Say that one more time. Do you know the difference between evergreen, seasonal news, and breaking news? Uh, no, I mean, I could probably guess, but. <laughs> well, let's hear your guess. I want to hear your guess, because it's probably what everybody else is doing. Uh, what do you think evergreen news is? Anytime, any type of news, uh, anytime, you know, it's. It's just there and you can pick it anytime. It's always available to you. All right, good. Okay. So when we're talking about Clayton's news and story ideas, these are mostly evergreen. They can be used any time of year. Okay, good. You sure you haven't done this already? I just <laughs> educated guess. <laughs> All right. Now what about um what about seasonal? Uh I'll give you I a hint. You this is the very first thing you said in this session. I don't know what I just said. You said Happy New Year. Uh, okay. You, well, I would have said seasonal would be the time. What's kind of what it says, seasonal, the time of the year it is, you know. Right. Uh, 
So it's kind of exactly. So let's just do the the whole year at once for everybody. Mm -hmm. So um, January through March is going to mm -hmm. be New Year's, Valentine's Day, St. Patrick's Day, taxes, mm -hmm. then right into graduate, Mother's Day, Father's Day, and travel time in the summertime. Mm -hmm. Summertime is really all about spending time outdoors mm -hmm. and travel and family vacation and de-stressing and having fun. And then it goes right back to school. And a lot of times back to school means back to the office productivity, mm -hmm. uh, routines, making sure that you're um, reaping the harvest of your summer crops, right? So then we can start to get into harvest time, eating, overeating, um, get preparing for the winter. And then all of a sudden we get into our winter holidays, all right? So then what do we do indoors? You know, so uh, then it's like the holiday of lights time. And then how do you deal with um, not enough sunlight and being indoors and missing the outdoors and all we want to do is play again. And then the whole cycle starts again. And then all those little, you know, holidays in between. Martin Luther King Day. Then we've got Black History Month. I'm thinking for your campaign in particular. Then you've got on July 4th, you know, then you've got Veterans Day. Like there's a lot of like plays inside there when we're talking about a, um, Black Lives Matter type of campaign. Okay. Okay. All right. Now another um, another is breaking news. Mm -hmm. so hopefully, right now, those of you who have been at news.google.com, you are looking at the breaking news of the day. And that's daily, weekly news. Mm -hmm. And that also gives you insight into the short lead. When we talk about long lead, you know, so if we're talking about magazines. Um, they're going to be looking at something that I've got a magazine right here, Women's World. It'll probably become obsolete soon, but they're still around. So these people will have a longer lead time. So when you pitch them right now, they're thinking about detox for March. I bet this is a March issue. In fact, let's see. Oh, no, of course, January. So this was uh, January 2019. This was last uh, January two ago. So, um, so January detox, this detox comes up again in March, springtime, right? People want to shed the, the, the hormones of your brain. There's heat on the brain and people start thinking about mating. And so then people start wanting to shed their clothing from winter. And then they start to want to be skinnier. See how it works? Because humanity, you know, like we often thought, well, how, or how, how is Michelle's human development master's degree going to be come to bear when PR it comes to bear because we are just humans telling human stories. Okay. So that's even that's evergreen seasonal breaking news. So when you're doing your pitch, you got to think about what, who you're pitching and when, for what purpose, right? Are you pitching women's world and teaching, you know, pitching them a, something about detoxification for the spring? Or are you in November t pitching them about New Year? Or are you in um, February teaching them about looking good on the beach? What kind of things you want to include in your pitch? How? So Clayton, what do you think? How do I actually uh, contact that person? Email, phone, snail mail, or social? And when you think about the love language, how does the, and I want you to think about my husband in that story I told you. How do you think we reach out to the people? I'm going to guess email. Maybe if that's the way that, so in my relationship with my business partner, Drew Gerber, oh. he likes a phone call. I was going to say probably phone call. Okay. That's what, <laughs> but what about me? I'm more of the writer. Mm -hmm. I like an email. Mm -hmm. So it's thinking about the person that you are. Clayton, if I had to guess, I would guess that you would like a phone call from me versus an email. Is that true? Correct. Okay. You know the type of communication that the press person needs based on what they're doing in the world. Okay. Okay. If they're on TV, they would prefer a phone call or some type. They want to get it. They don't like to read lots of emails. Otherwise, they wouldn't be on TV. They're doing a dynamic interaction. Same with radio. Same with podcasts. Writers like an email or they want that Twitter connection or something like that, right? Twitter actually is surprisingly a good way to contact press today. You know that? 
You just got to find their Twitter account. And many of the press, they don't, the individual producers, um, and you can look at the end of the, the show itself and then uh, look to see who's working on those shows and pitch them based on name and just find them on Twitter. Okay. So that's it. That's our lecture. And so we're going to break into a breakout session. I want you to actually talk about what you're going to do this upcoming uh, week based on your pitch and finding media that you're going to pitch. And then we're going to come back. We're going to have questions and then we'll be done. Questions. This is the question and answer time. Um, I will stay about five minutes after the hour. So um, Hannah, is that cool with you that we go just five minutes long? Okay. And so um, what questions do you have? So to do the questions, you go to the participant uh, and you raise your hand. So the, there's a, a way to raise your hand under participants. Or you can do this and we'll just see you. Questions. Oh my gosh, I'm that thorough and the book is that thorough. I doubt it. Okay, Julia, Julia, Julia. Um, so one of the things that came up is, if I recall correctly, you had a separate list of that you could purchase a subscription for that actually showed the media that said like this magazine is looking for a story on this. It's not pitch rate. It's more of the top level. I thought you had a. Uh, Hannah may be able to help you. That's a very specific list, Julia. Yes. Yeah. We can definitely get that for you. I don't know exactly what you need, but I there's- you used to have a subscription where you could um, see what people are list, what top level magazines were listing and things. Well, what you're actually talking about um, is editorial calendars. And so what, you know, so what, so there are every magazine, like more magazine will publish their, in their media kit for advertising. They'll mm -hmm. say what they're actually covering for the year. Okay. okay. And then, but there's different things that you're talking about and um, there's different ways to get that information. So if you're, are you wanting to purchase a list based on topic? Maybe it was your gift list. Yeah, you know what? I am actually in the trenches, Julia. So you're probably, okay. uh, Hannah's your best bet because she's probably working with uh, our CEO on some type of specific product okay. that you're thinking of from the I'll past. I'll follow up with her. I, Hannah, one of the things that I think that Julia might like that we don't have as a product, but I'm, Let's talk about it. We, talking about is another thing, Juliet, that might be of interest, right? So we can actually look to see who, what the press is talking about. And okay. so it's like forecasting what they're actually going to cover is one way to pitch them. And you can find that under their advertising kits at their websites. Or, but if you wanted to do it, you know, more quickly, like we have a, a way of actually looking at, we have proprietary information that we purchase where we can get into like talking about. So like okay. I, for my doctors, I'll get in and say, who's talking about COVID and then I'll pitch them based on topic. Okay. Thank All you. All right. So you're welcome. So Mary Burnett Brown and then Katie Bratland. Hey, Mary. Hi, happy new year. Hi, Thank happy you. new year, everybody. Thank you. Um, you know, I wrote my book and my hometown paper, um, I was on the front page of the article in the paper November 30th. There was a <laughs> thank Yay. you. I pitched the edit, I pitched the editor or the okay, but anyway. Um, so how, how do I get the e edition copy? You know, because you have to, it's a subscription to this local paper. Because you have so to call I the I got it. I got the question. So Mary Burnett, what you need to do is uh, there's a circulation department at the local paper. And they will, they will, they'll also get you a V, uh, what is called a VLOX if you want. Okay. Um, so they'll do like a fancy version for you. And so talk to inside the, the people who are like care, it's under circulation or the history of the paper. Like they're dealing with the libraries to get their paper there. They're going to be uh, doing an archive of it and they can get that for you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. You. You're welcome. All right, uh, Rosalind, and then then Katie, because I I got so, or maybe I should do Katie and then Rosalind. My apologies, Katie. We promised you next. Um, so this is kind of a, a particular question, but so what is the best way uh, to keep track of the media and any notes that you might have about your conversations with them? Do you guys just use 
an Excel file? Do you have a program that you use? You know, an oh, app. Too. I, I'll tell you what we use, and it's of course you know user based, but we use Basecamp. Okay. We also use Google Excel Sheets. And then, um, we actually purchase the, there's a lot of different media list services out there right. we have used. There's like, I'm just going to, because they're expensive and I'm not recommending them. I'm just letting you know, because I'm giving you all my secrets. Um, so there's Muckrack. Yeah. There's also Cision. There's also Meltwater. There's also PR Newswire. So you basically you just Google media list services and yeah. then you price them out and the, the annual cost of that, it's going to be about 10 grand. Yeah, no, I know okay. they're really expensive. Yeah. So unless yeah. you're a firm or you've got a reason to have that list every single day, I wouldn't yeah. recommend it. No. And instead you need to just use those websites. But Katie, there's also some other services. If you email me, there's somebody pitched me. They tried to get us to do a service. I liked it because it integrated your, your emails with the other, but I just, you know, it's just costly. And Gmail's yeah, free. So like when our team really looked at it, we're like, eh, let's just use Gmail because it's free. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Okay. Now Rosalind. Michelle, um, getting back to Clayton's uh, media kit. Yes. Uh, rather than labeling him as author speaker on, on the page, I was wondering if there would be any value in branding him with a label like I just picked something out of the head, enforcement disruptor, law enforcement disruptor, or some other tag that you're starting to use to get some attention for him and make him less generic? Or is that the wrong place to be doing that? Well, you want to have it generic enough that the press can categorize him, right? So the reason why we lead with communication expert is because we want him to get inside the conversations about communications, but you know, Annie's a police, a retired police sergeant, right? So there's, we want, you know, we could also put author. I think that the main thing is, is um, looking at places like, uh, I like to just go to Huffington Post. Um, just, I want you to think about in terms of like in, this is any of the papers will have this. Um, you see down here, it says news, coronavirus, politics, 2020 elections, entertainment, life, personal video shopping. They have to categorize Clayton in one of these. They're going to categorize him probably in politics, maybe 2020 elections or life. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you want to make sure that the title that you give yourself inside your media materials reflects the segment that they might put you in. Very good question. Okay, is that it, Rosalind? That anything helpful. else? Yes, that was helpful. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and have uh, Katie and Mary's hands put down. Um, they use the digital hands inside the, uh, the chat room, the participant room, but I know that sometimes that's difficult for people. So I'm scanning to see if there's any other hands up that are just, was that it as far as questions? Anything else I can, any Gary, other support Gary that you need? Buckman was saying he was trying to ask you a question. Okay. Mr. Buckman? Actually, I, it's Victoria Buckman, his wife. <laughs> there, oh, there, oh, we've got a Gary. Oh, okay. Gary and Victoria Buckman. Hello. Hello. Yeah, sir. For some funny reason, it didn't have a, a, an option to raise my hand or his hand. Um, <laughs> you were talking about, um, Earlier, you were talking about media lists. Um, I okay. I, I lost my. I lost my question. Do 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 do. Yes. Do, yes. Do, yes. Do. Okay. Next. <laughs> no, you're it. We'll wait. You're the last we, one. We got one okay. more minute left, so we'll wait. All right. All right. So, what's the difference between a byline bio, a broadcast bio, and a full bio? So the byline bio is print. It's for print. It's for what people are going to be using for uh, at the end of uh, an article. Think about this. What's the, what is this, the difference in the content? Um, so this is for people to read and this is for okay. people to say. Uh, okay. So okay. This is, you want to think of this as sort of like, uh, like you do a play and you want to do this, this, the byline is going to be more like a script. This is going to be actually spoken, 
well, both script and play are, are spoken. So think of this as a novel. This is the novel and this is, um, so read, spoken. Okay, so because it's TV and radio, no one's gonna see it, they're actually speaking it. And That's then right. The, and then the full bio, does it include a little bit of both? Well, the full bio is basically just the, the nitty gritty of everything. Right. So for Clayton, it's going to go back to his, he's going to include his degrees, which may or may not come to bear in the, the you want these, the byline and the broadcast to be shorter because it's less, you want to tell the press what, how to be promoted. If you put too much in the bios, then they're going to edit it for you. And that's not what you want. That's one mm -hmm. way to control what's being said about you is to give them less. Okay, so your bios are about three lines. Is that correct? Or is it so many yeah. words? Yeah, the, I, I, you want maybe 50 words. You want okay. it tight. You want tight. Okay. There's yes. a lot more. There's, there's more um, detailed on that. And if there's more on the bios, we can um, maybe deal with that on a one-on-one -on -one basis if you need that. But um, that's, that's, that's generally... You just say it out loud for the broadcast bio and the okay. best a good way is actually have a child read it back to you and if the child is stumbling over what you've written right it's not good and it's you want to change that okay um, and it, uh, this is our first um class thank you for having oh, us you're welcome. how do we go can we find the recordings of past classes all of the links are at um the blog that i'm actually providing you so you can go to storytellertothemedia.com and get caught up with everything and find all the links that you need there. Thank you. Thank you You're so welcome. Thank okay. You for, thank, you, thank you for doing this. Oh, my pleasure, Gary. My pleasure. It really is um, a, a pleasure to serve you all in the pandemic. And I hope that we do find an end um, to the challenges that we see locally, nationally, internationally. And I wanna remind you that you are the difference makers. You authors, you uh, entrepreneurs, you community leaders, you are the difference that we need to see in our news cycle right now. And I am more passionate than ever to empower those of you who are making a difference to do so in the world. So please let us know what you need. I will see you next Friday. Have a wonderful time. And if you need anything, Hannah at wasabipublicity.com.